Um, let's take a look again at that R minus and H minus handout. And now we're looking at the top. Overview of reactions for R minus and H minus at the top of page one of the R minus and H minus handout. So you can see there that they have Grignards and alkyl lithiums at the top. Uh, and notice that they can do two things. Towards the left, we show them attacking carbonyls and epoxides, right? It's an epoxide. An epoxide is another name for oxocyclopropane. Okay. When I made this, I was, I was for an instructor who called it epoxides. So, uh, but that's also oxocyclopropane. So that's this guy here. Uh, so to help jog your memory, you got the picture of it here, right? So I also put in the picture of the oxocyclopropane. All right, so that shows the two things that it can attack. Um, okay, so and they both do the same thing. And how about on the right? On the right, show the third thing they can do. They can deprotonate electronegative atoms, like oxygen, nitrogen, and sulfur, especially oxygen. So those are the three things that we can do with these. They can follow the left-hand path and attack carbonyls or epoxides, or they can follow the right-hand path and deprotonate oxygens, nitrogens, and sulfur. This is just a summary of what I have on the board. That's just supposed to summarize what I have on the board already. Now remember, suppose that there is both a protic solvent and a carbonyl in the same beaker. Well, what, what will the, who will the Grignard attack? The, it will deprotonate first. That's why we can never put H2O when we do a Grignard. That's right. If it has a choice, this is plan A, because acid-base reactions are fast. That's in the handout as well, right? If you look at the arrows on the right, it's got the word fast above the arrows on the right. That's the faster reaction. That means if you have a choice, you're going to go down that right-hand path. Obviously, notice that these arrows are not yield arrows. We're not saying we're making those things. We're just going down the path of reacting. Those things. Can all of these five things deprotonate OH and H or SH, or is that just? All of them except, which is the one that uh, you can see from the handout, which one can't deprotonate oxygen, nitrogen, and sulfur? NAD. Sodium borohydride. Notice how there's an arrow missing for sodium borohydride. Sodium borohydride does not have an arrow on the right. So it's not strong enough base to generally deprotonate <laughs> oxygen, nitrogen, and sulfur. What's the practical importance of that? Um, when you use Grignards, um, can you use them in alcohol? Yes. yes. Suppose you want a Grignard to attack a carbonyl. If you want a Grignard to attack a carbonyl, can you use alcohol as your solvent? No. No, because it would deprotonate the alcohol instead, right? Can you use an alkyl lithium in alcohol or water? No, because no, it would deprotonate it. How about lithium aluminum hydride? No. Nope. How about sodium borohydride? Yes. Yes. You might have noticed that whenever they draw lithium aluminum hydride reactions, there's always two numbered steps. First, the lithium aluminum hydride. Um, and then the H3O plus. And the same thing, first Grignard, then H3O plus. Or first alkyl lithium, and then H3O plus. But if you've seen them writing sodium borohydride, they just use a comma and an alcohol because sodium borohydride is not strong enough to deprotonate this to any important extent. So this is actually important enough you really should know this. Sodium borohydride um, is put in at the same time as the, pro as the protonating solvent, whereas um, all the other things are not. So there's actually some important significance to the fact that sodium borohydride is the only compound at the top of the handout that does not have an arrow pointing to the right. Um, that, that actually has a meaning there. That may be a little bit too subtle on my part. But that means that um, so sodium borohydride does not go down that right-hand path. It does not deprotonate oxygen, nitrogen, and sulfur, um, whereas all those other compounds do. Okay. Uh, so uh, there we go there. Uh, it's all right. Let's take out the um, oxidation of alcohols and uh, reduction of alcohol sand out. Um, lithium aluminum hydride, you can see, is used separately from the H3O plus. 
The Grignard reagent on the right is used separately from the H3O plus in separate numbered steps. The alkylipin is used separately, but there, see, the sodium borohydride, that's put in at the same time as the alcohol. All right, and that's just because we know the sodium borohydride does not deprotonate protic solvents the way everybody else was. So that, that's important enough that you really should know that. Okay, so those things are all uh, coming together now. So, uh, all right. So uh, let's see, where were we? So these are the three things you can do with Grignards, and these are also the three things that you can do with um, alkyl lithiums. And I don't think you're going to learn anything else that you can do with Grignards and alkyl lithiums this semester. These are the only things you can do with Grignards and alkyl lithiums this semester. Um, you can see that from the handout, right? From the handout on R minus, these are the only things you can do with Grignards and alkyl lithiums. So let me ask you this. is kind of a trick question. What would be the reaction here? No reaction. No reaction. What do you think might, some people might mistakenly think would happen? Yeah, but the I would leave the C, the minus. The yeah, minus. what mechanism would that be if it really happened? SMP. SN2. It seems like this should be a great SN2. It seems like a great SN2. It seems like this is a good nucleophile, primary, and a good leaving group. Um, but Grignards don't do SN2. Grignards do not do SN2 reactions. I'm not even sure uh, why that is. It seems like this should work great. I don't remember what the reason is for why this doesn't work. Maybe they mentioned this in the textbook. So I don't know why Grignards can't do SN2. It seems like it would work fine, uh, but they don't. Because we, these are the only three things they do. This semester, these are the only three things that Green Yards will do. So they don't do SN2. So this reaction won't happen. This reaction won't happen. Which means that we still, uh, so somebody was saying before, something like Green Yards can't form carbon-carbon bonds or something. Well, what we should have said is they can't form carbon-carbon bonds in an SN2. They totally can form carbon-carbon bonds in these two ways. No, so, I said al the alkyl lithium, because that's what I read. Ah. But that's the same as for the Grignard. So we can say the same thing as the Grignard. So the alkyl lithium could not do this either. So I could have put in the lithium. And these could all be alkyl lithiums. This semester, alkyl lithiums and Grignards are going to be equivalent for us. So these are the three things that an alkyl lithium can do. An alkyl lithium can do the same things as a Grignard. You might just want to put that on the handout for R minus. Anything that the Grignard can do, the alkyl lithium can do. And anything the Grignard can't do, the alkyl lithium can't do. Here, it says here the, in his lecture notes, RLI cannot be used to make carbon carbon bonds oh, by, by SN2. SN2. Okay. However, they can make carbon carbon bonds by attacking carbonyls and oxycyclopropane. But does that mean that the. Um, Magnesium ones can. You mean the Grignards? Yeah, because he only said that. Well, remember Grignards are equivalent to alkyl lithiums. So yeah, they can they anything um, they, they both can do the same things and they can't do the same things. Um, and again you can you saw that from uh, the handout. If you look at the top of the R minus and H minus handout, the arrows for the Grignard are identical to the arrows for the alkyl lithium. They both have an arrow to the right and an arrow to the left. They can both deprotonate things, and they can both attack carbonyls and epoxides. So let's keep going, and I think you'll see where we're going with this. Um, so this reaction doesn't work. All right, well, this is very frustrating to uh, the unfortunate uh, organic chemists, because they really would love to do an SN2 with a carbon nucleophile. Of course, we could use cyanide, but that's not very interesting, because that's so short. We'd like to add a long carbon chain. Cyanide doesn't cut it that way. Um, so how can we do an SN2? Um, with a carbon nucleophile, well, they invented a whole new reagent to do that. So there's a whole new reagent that does that, which is, I think they're called the organocuprates. Is that the, the word you've heard? Okay. So, um, how does that look? That looks like this. C-U-L-I. So it's really copper and uh, lithium.
All right, so these are, uh, if I remember correctly, these are called organocuprates. That kind of makes sense. Cuprate is for copper. I don't think this is in your textbook, is it? This is a, kind of unusual. Your instructor usually sticks pretty close to the textbook. Um, but this reaction, I think, don't, uh, I don't think this is in the textbook. All right, so who's the uh, nucleophilic carbon here? These carbons are nucleophilic. Why, why would we think that they're nucleophilic? Well, first of all, um, let's uh, looking at this bond here, would we think that this carbon tends to have positive or negative charge on it? Negative. 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 Why? Because, because of copper. Copper is a metal, right, from the left-hand side of the periodic table, and carbon is a non-metal from the right-hand side. So the electrons are going to be pulled a lot closer to the carbons than to the metals over here. 